Yeah, Nintendo's really doing something that was completely unexpected. I would say by a majority of onlookers, whether you're in the media or you're just a Nintendo fan or an outsider that maybe you just play video games elsewhere and you just like to watch, or maybe you just don't play video games at all, but you just know who Nintendo is just because you've heard about them, whether from the Mario movie or, I don't know, pop culture references. So Nintendo is doing something very unexpected, and that unexpected thing is leading to Nintendo actually showing a lot of confidence in the direction they're going, despite several fans beginning to panic a little about when the heck Nintendo's next system is going to be coming out. While that panic does feel somewhat warranted for many, what you might not realize is that Nintendo knows exactly what they're doing this entire time. So what we're going to do is get into some interesting facts about Nintendo and the direction they're going in and some reports on things happening with them, showing how confident Nintendo is in what they're doing and why it is so unexpected for many of us for Nintendo to be doing this. And on top of that, I want to remind you that if you're enjoying this video, go ahead and like and subscribe. I want you to go down below and let me know your favorite memory of a Nintendo system launch, be it, you know, the excitement of picking it up at the store or a game you played at launch, or if you didn't get a system at launch, what did it feel like when you did finally get your hands on that hot to trot Nintendo system? So what are we talking about? Well, first we have this article over here at VGC that says it's official. No Nintendo console has lasted as long as Switch without being replaced. Now been 2,700 days. It's actually been more because this was posted all the way back on July 11th. So, you know, you can go ahead and add like a month uh, on to that 2,700 days. Uh, it is indeed the longest a Nintendo system has ever been on the market for Nintendo without a replacement coming out. And we're not talking about replacement being announced, a replacement coming out. And this matters because no one should have expected Nintendo Switch to last eight years. It'll be officially eight complete years on March 3rd, 2025. And if somehow there's no new system out by March 7th of 2025, it will be the longest a system has been on the market without a replacement coming from a company that didn't leave the market. Like we could talk about Dreamcast, but you know, in terms of a company that did not leave the market, it'll be the longest the system has existed before the next one comes out in literal video game history. The longest right now is the Xbox 360. Why? Because the Xbox 360 came out a year before the Nintendo Wii and the PlayStation 3, yet didn't get replaced until the same time the PlayStation 4 came out. So when we think about that, that means that all Nintendo has to do is pretty much make it to the end of this fiscal year without a Nintendo Switch 2 coming out to be the longest Nintendo's ever had a system on the shelf without a replacement. And that is unexpected. Now, I mentioned that doing that actually shows a lot of confidence from Nintendo and shows that they are very confident about where they're going and what they're doing. And some of this has to do, obviously, with just glancing at the games lineup for this year with Echoes of Wisdom and Jamboree. And you could throw up Princess Peach Showtime that started this year, not this fiscal year, but started this year. Uh, you know, we have Endless Ocean Luminous and so many others, right? It's it, it, Mario and Luigi Brothership. Someone's going to, like, slap me in the face in the comments if I didn't bring that one up. That's a fairly strong lineup for Nintendo. It might not be full of the heavy hitters like a Smash Bros. or an Animal Crossing or a 3D Zelda or a 3D Mario or, I don't know, uh, any... I mean, I mean, some people would argue like a new Fire Emblem. But here's the thing. They also have a couple big games promised for next year. They've already shown off, at least the Pokemon company did, uh, Pokemon Legends ZA. It's at least been announced. We'll probably see it again one more time before the end of the year. And Metro Prime 4 Beyond has also been announced, and we may even see that one more time before the end of the year at a potential Nintendo Direct. Or maybe we won't, but either way, the game has been shown off, and they are both games announced for Nintendo Switch. Two big games, one of them that's going to be a for sure really big seller, the other one trying to be a big seller for 2025. So they are already showing extreme confidence in Nintendo Switch heading into next year. Now, why does this set Nintendo up for future success? Well, a few things is they obviously confidently feel like the Nintendo Switch in year eight is going to sell 13 and a half million units, as stated by Shintaro Furukawa. He did note that it was sort of a hope that they get there, you know, but it is a goal of theirs. And hey, look, the first quarter fiscal report came out. They sold 2.1 million, only 300,000 less units than the PlayStation 5 did, which is half as old as Nintendo Switch. And yeah, they didn't change their projections, meaning that they are right on target right now for that 13 and a half 
million units. Now, obviously, the talk of the town is the Nintendo Switch 2. And when I talk about how confident Nintendo is and what they're doing and where they're going, we can't ignore that, hey, what they're doing and where they're going, all roads lead to Nintendo Switch 2. Obviously, we know that Shantaro Furukawa, Nintendo's president and CEO, put out there publicly that, hey, they would have an announcement related to the Nintendo Switch successor this fiscal year. And we obviously know all the reports and rumors out there about the specs and the games and the reveal timing and all that. And if you have been paying attention lately, you might view some of the recent reports to actually be a bit of a Debbie Downer. But I actually believe it's the other way around. Uh, let's look over some of these reports because they all kind of corroborate each other in different ways. First, we have uh, you know Christopher Dring over at GameIndustry.biz and a podcast said something that's been summarized here by Video Game Chronicles' Tom Ivan. It says developers reportedly told not to expect Switch 2 launch before April of 2025. Switch's successor is seemingly set to be released during Nintendo's next fiscal year. And the quotes are down here where it says, No developer I've spoken to uh, expects it to be launching this fiscal year. Dring said, In fact, I've been told they've been told not to expect it in the current fiscal year. A bunch of people I spoke to. Hope it's out in April or May time, still early next year, not late. I don't think any of us uh, want a late Switch to launch because we'll all want new Nintendo console and everyone gets very excited for it. And we don't want that crunch of Grand Theft Auto 6 and Switch and all that kind of stuff on top of each other. Of course, we're talking about as journalists, it's going to be very difficult to cover, you know, big games from Nintendo with the Switch 2 launch combined with Grand Theft Auto 6 combined, obviously with a new Call of Duty and all the big holiday games. It would just make... Their job's that much more difficult, but, you know, when we're talking about our enjoyment of things, that maybe isn't the most relevant stuff. Now, look, that's just one report, and I put in a video that I actually made on this earlier that Christopher Dring hasn't always been the most reliable lately with his Nintendo predictions or his sourced information with Nintendo. This isn't to say that he's not a legit journalist with real sources. I don't doubt that, but it just means that it would be nice to hear stuff from others. Well, then we have Takashi Machizuki over here. He is a reporter over at Bloomberg, and he's been very reliable in covering Nintendo stuff in the past, not just about Switch Pro and Switch 2, which, yes, I know Switch Pro didn't come out, but other Nintendo things as well, uh, upcoming games and all of that. And you see here that he uh, quote tweeted the VGC article here, and he says, there is an article from overseas that Nintendo's next generation console will not be released this fiscal year. Indeed, at the beginning of this year, it was said that it could be released as early as March of next year, but recently fewer people are considering March as a possibility. Now that is not exactly what it says. It says people are being told it's not happening in March. Uh, but hey, this could be what his sources are saying. But then if you go down further, you see he also responded to originally did a smiley face, which quite interesting. I don't know if that meant like he was get, he felt like affirmation for his own sources. But then someone said May, isn't it? And then he did the frowny face, which, you know, makes people think, oh, it's not going to come in May of next year. Uh, that's sad. It's going to come holiday. Like, I think it's obvious that no developer actually knows the true release date. They just might know a general timing, especially if they happen to be a launch game. If you're a launch game for the new system and you know you're a launch game for the new system, yeah, you probably know a little bit of a general timing. Uh, but things got more interesting as time moved on because then we got this article over from Eurogamer from somebody who does have a really credible record with Nintendo and leaks in general, uh, Tom Phillips, for where he says, Hope Fades for Switch 2 in early 2025. No, he said, Hope Fades. I want to note, he says, Fades, it's not gone. Like, there's still hopium for a March release, but... You know, it's fading based on the sources currently. And he says Nintendo Switch 2 won't launch before April 2025 per a report online that Eurogamer understands to be correct. So there is your uh, corroboration. Eurogamer understands that report to be correct. Uh, it doesn't really go into like a whole, oh, my sources have added this. My sources have added that. This is about the game industry, not biz stuff. Uh, and, and you see Eurogamer can also corroborate this with April 2025 being the earliest the console could now arrive. So you can obviously see that online rumors have previously suggested Nintendo would ape the launch rollout of Switch 1 with its successor. The Switch 1 was memorably announced in October 2016 via a trailer and named the console and showed off the main gimmick, and that was a hybrid device. Nintendo then confirmed the console's March 2020 launch date at the start of that year. Uh, so they were kind of hoping for a similar thing here. And look, we can sit back and, and look at this as this sounds like it's all negative news, but it's really not. 
Uh, what this tells you is that Nintendo knows what they're doing. They confidently think they're going to sell only 2 million less systems than they did last fiscal year, despite not having the Tears of the Kingdom. Like, there's no Tears of the Kingdom, there's no Mario Wonder, and there's no Pikmin 4 this year. If you want to argue, well, okay, well, we have um, a Jamboree coming, sure, but Jamboree, like, Mario Party games haven't traditionally been system sellers. They usually just sell to people who already have the system. Now, you can argue we have Echoes of Wisdom, but is Echoes of Wisdom really on the level of, uh, you know, a... a side-scrolling brand new Mario game in Mario Wonder, or even on the level of Tears of the Kingdom, I think all of us can understand maybe our pure, you know, unadulterated excitement for these games could be as high or higher than for those. It's going to depend on your taste in games. But, I mean, I think we can all agree, like, Tears of the Kingdom sold 20 million units in, like, three months last year. I don't think Nintendo has any game doing that, although they do have a Switch Lite Zelda edition that could end up selling a couple of mil, and that could be a little bit of a boost, and was probably part of Nintendo's 13.5 million sales projections. Also, there could be price cuts and everything, too. We don't know what Nintendo's going to do this holiday. But I do think it's interesting that when I talk about Nintendo uh, doing the unexpected and having Switch last longer than likely any console generation, any video game platform to date, and on top of that, still being extremely confident in what they're doing with Switch 2, I think that this was unexpected because a lot of people think, well, if Switch 2 doesn't come out till summer next year or Switch 2 doesn't come out till holiday next year, man, Nintendo's really missed the boat and the technology in the thing might be two, three, four years old. And oh my gosh. But then guys, we hear all these other reports, rumors out there, things like how Assassin's Creed Shadows are coming over, how Square Enix is like planning to put everything in the multi-platform and maybe go all in on Switch 2. Same with Capcom. Does anyone expect Monster Hunter Wilds to not be there on Switch 2? How about Visions of Mana on Switch 2? Heck, Elden Ring and Baldur's Gate 3 could end up on Switch 2. The point is, is that Nintendo's in a very advantageous position, and some of that's just due to the competition. Obviously, we know Xbox as a platform uh, hasn't really been hitting off uh, in a couple of generations and playstation well it's doing fine and i believe only tracking at the moment two million in sales behind the playstation 4 i just went over how this last fiscal quarter it only sold three hundred thousand more units despite being half as old as the nintendo switch it kind of shows that nintendo's sort of in a pole position that nobody else is really a threat to at the moment and that gives nintendo extreme confidence to launch nintendo switch 2 correctly uh, there was something Kit and Krista said recently on one of their shows, and it's something that I do resonate with. The Nintendo Switch was a rushed launch. When they got that out, it wasn't. they didn't plan on Wii U to be dead by 2016. Uh, they thought Wii U would last a normal console generation or five or six years. This would explain why things like the Nintendo Switch Online didn't end up launching until September of 2018. That was a year and a half after the system came out. The system released in an unfinished state. There were issues sometimes with, you know, bend gate early on where some people's, you know, launch docks were a little bit bent, causing the system to bend when it heats up. Uh, obviously, we've had issues with Joy-Con drift, and you could talk about the plastic nubs that lock in not really being that great. All that could have been addressed if it would launch when it was probably planned to originally, like way back before the Wii U was a failure. When they first were conceptualizing it, they probably were thinking that it would be like a 2017, 2018 probably holiday 2018 launch if I had to guess. Obviously, we know the internal documents showed 2016, but that was after it was already conceptualized and they were just picking out the tech and all that. I And obviously by then they knew the Wii U was a failure, so they needed to get something out sooner than later. Switch 2 is not being rushed. And that is something that we should be excited about. To me, that shows confidence that Nintendo thinks they can wait all this time and still get a Switch 2 out and have that banger lineup, build that excitement, get people to want this system. And I know I've talked in the past, and you can argue this video is a little contradictory, uh, because I have mentioned in the past, how, like you don't want Nintendo to lose momentum. You don't want them to uh, get to the point where people don't care about the system anymore, like what happened with Wii, hadn't in the Wii U. And then when you launch Switch 2, just nobody cares because nobody cares about Switch anymore. The difference is Nintendo's not really losing momentum. Uh, their last fiscal report showed they have more active people playing Switch today than at any point in Nintendo's entire history. Uh, and I mean every platform, whether it was DS, 3DS, uh, Wii, they have 128 million active users playing their Switch today. That is not a unhealthy system. That is not an audience that's abandoned the Nintendo Switch. 
That's a very active audience continuing to play games. And that level of activity with the level of success is why we're hearing all these reports and rumors about so many AAA third-party companies pretty much going all in on Switch 2. It is the industry leader. You are leaving sales on the table not being there, and no one else seems to be able to touch the sort of success Nintendo is experiencing right now, not even PlayStation, who I still believe will probably somehow hit 100 million in sales because they just do that every single generation. Although, what happens if it doesn't, if it's tracking 2 million behind PlayStation 4 right now into this fiscal year, what if they're tracking behind 3 or 4 million? The next fiscal year, tracking behind 5, 6, 7. It could get to the point where maybe PlayStation 5 doesn't sell 100 million units, but Nintendo Switch 2, meanwhile, might just explode off the scene and get really big. You know Switch 2 is going to have the next Dragon Quest. That's going to make it massive in Japan. Obviously, Pokemon's a big deal everywhere. Um, a new invent of Mario Kart game could just really fly off shelves, as we've seen with, you know, even just the Wii U Mario Kart game blowing up on Nintendo Switch. So I think Nintendo is in a confident position and they know what they're doing and they want to make sure when they launch Switch 2 that it's actually done right rather than being like, hey, we've had the system out for a long time. We need to get Switch 2 out. One word that Furukawa used back in May that I want to bring up, he put it in an investor's Q&A. He said that Nintendo is devoted. That word, devoted. Nintendo is devoted to the Nintendo Switch successor this fiscal year. I want you to understand what that particular word means, Okay. It means you're extremely loyal, right, to this idea of the Nintendo Switch successor behind the scenes. You've given over to the study and the discussion of, you're invoking or pronouncing, you are essentially dedicating yourself to this platform behind the scenes. That word devoted to me meant a whole lot when Furukawa said it, because what it means is, they want to get this absolutely right out the gate. And in order to do that, it also involves maintaining a strong and healthy Switch, which is exactly what they are doing. It's happening in the moment. Switch is healthy. It is healthy. Nintendo has did something I didn't think they could do two years ago. I did not think year eight of Nintendo Switch could be this healthy. I will fully admit I was wrong. I thought if this system did not come out in 2024, it would actually be a really negative thing for Nintendo because I didn't think they could keep Switch's momentum going. And again, I was wrong. And I've never been more happy to be wrong to watch Nintendo at the top of the mountain, at the peak of their powers, being able to maintain the success of this 2015 technology, this 2017 system, keep it going strong, keep the active users engaged, keep Nintendo fans excited with the new Lego sets and the movies and the theme parks and the museum and obviously the video games. And then meanwhile, they just drop the system when it's absolutely 100% ready to go, bug free, uh, you know, games ready to just blow our minds, might be revealing soon, might not be revealing until March. That's, you know, Nintendo's own words. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm stunned. Nintendo has done the impossible in my mind. Nintendo has done the unexpected and... I'm really excited for what's next. We're going to keep talking Switch 2, of course, because I'm excited for it, but we're also going to be talking about Metro Prime 4 Beyond and Legend ZA and Jamboree and Mario and Luigi and Echoes of Wisdom, maybe even some Famicom Detective Club whenever we get some information. There was an ESRB update recently, which didn't really give us anything to talk about, but man, oh man, oh man, I'm just excited. So thank you guys so much for being here. Let me know how you think about this down in the comments below. Am I on to something? Did you expect all of this from Nintendo? The confidence, the length, the, the, the strength of Switch and you know the strength of where Nintendo's position is in the market? Did you expect all of this, especially heading into the next generation? Or are you one of those outliers that predicted this the whole time and just always knew better than anyone that one, Switch 2 would never be in 2024, it would never be in this fiscal year, which I guess we technically don't know that for sure yet, and that Nintendo would end up still being okay and this strong, this late in the game. Let me know down in the comments below. I am Nathaniel Rebel Jans from Nintendo Prime, and I'll catch you in the next video.